Um, today I'm going to be uh, drawing and hopefully watercoloring. Um, I haven't watercolored for a very long time. A very long time. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. I mean, this may go poorly, but you know what? Like, it's all practice. It all counts. So, um, you know, I mean, however it turns out, it doesn't really matter because it, it still gets me my time in, you know. Um, let's see. So what I've got here is I've got a photo that I'm working from um, that I'll be... Uh, basically photo bashing which is like a not very nice way of saying like copying a photo it's sort of looked down upon I think in the in the artist realm you know like people are you know that this is somehow like a it's a lesser art form which I, I mean it, it is but it's really good practice right it's like if I can make a thing look like the thing in front of me then you know eventually I'll be able to uh, make a thing that looks the way I want it to and I you know, I have definitely, like, done references sort of cobbled together, so I'm um, doing him completely uh, angled. That's all right. We'll go with it. We'll go with it. Um, you know, I've, I've done things where, where references are kind of, you know, uh, cobbled together, you know, and uh, you kind of, you know, you make it... <clears throat> <laughs> wow, words. Um, you know, you make it your own thing by using multiple references and kind of pulling them together. I don't really work from imagination. That's actually very difficult. Um, quote, real artists will tell you that as well, that it is it is challenging to work completely from imagination. And, and most of the, the things you'll hear is like definitely 100% use references. Um, the idea being that in an ideal world, when you're when you're at a skill level, um, you will you will not need to use comp like copy a reference. You'll use it literally as a reference. So <clears throat> I'm not there yet. I'm okay with that. You know, I mean, the kind of drawing that I do is pretty. Uh, you know, it's it's it is what it is. You know, it's just for fun. Um, I just enjoy making things that look nice um, or look like I want them. Now, I can't always make things that look exactly the way I want, you know. I'm just not there yet, but I'm getting closer and I'm, you know, doing various, like, you know, like, courses. I <laughs> Most of what I've learned, I've learned on YouTube, which is why I'm here, you know. I, I, I think it's important that people see that, like, you don't have to be good you know, to start. I'm hoping, like, eventually you'll look at my stuff, or, like, maybe you look at it now and you're like, what? How is that possible? Um, you know, some people are going to look at it and be like, wow, that's real garbage. And other people are going to look at it and say, wow, I could never do that. But believe me, um, if you saw me, you know, before, you would have said, you know, like, that's not that great. You know, you, you get better by practicing. That's, that's really all, all it is, you know? It's just practice, 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 and you get better. Like, no matter what level you're at, wherever you started, I started in a weird spot because I, um, yeah, it was kind of odd. So I went to a quilting retreat, and, um, I tried drawing before, and I just hadn't had any luck with it. My, my impression was kind of that, you know, like, when you, when you're an artiste, right, like, you just know how to make art, and, like, that's how that works. Well, I mean, it's, it's not, it's a, it's a practice. It's a skill. Like, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know why I thought that way, but I did. So, um, so my impression, you know, for a very long time when I was younger was that, you know, I just, I wasn't an artist. I didn't have it in me. And I tried, I hadn't tried watercolors like with any kind of seriousness. Um, but I thought they were interesting, you know, and kind of like fun, but I never had any luck with them. And then I, um, bear with me here. Okay, so right now I'm just looking at my references and I'm looking at like this fold here in my photo reference and I'm just comparing it to where the foreshortening of the arm is. So, and it's there. Cool. All right, so, um, <clears throat> yeah, so I lost my place in my story. Basically, I 
I didn't think I would be any good, so I didn't bother, and then I went to a quilting retreat, oddly enough. Um, quilting was a thing that I really enjoyed doing, and um, I went to this quilting retreat, and the, um, the, the teacher there had talked about this, this set that she had with a water brush. Now, I had never heard of a water brush before in my life, and uh, I looked at it, you know, at the retreat, they had some there, it was the coolest thing and I was like oh this is so cool like with that amount of control over water I might actually be able to do something and then I started it and I was like, was like I mean to my mind I wasn't that bad considering that like you know I had no no real history um, or understanding of how any of that works you know like I was pretty impressed with myself so so I went ahead and I, I continued to do that for quite a long time and I started that probably three or three or four years ago. I think I took a year and a half off to uh, to do a quilt actually. Um, it was very it was very labor intensive and so I basically stopped arting for a while. But um, <clears throat> you know I I picked this up and I it, it seemed pretty quick to me um, and pretty easy I guess um, for me to to watercolor. And I, you know, I basically did like a portrait every day. I'd just pull a picture off the internet and I'd do a portrait. And then, um, so that was all I did really for, for quite a while. Here we go. And, um, and then, uh, I got into fandom a little while ago. Um, a year ago, almost exactly. Well, hello again. All right, so uh, I I did quite a bit of work. Um, my phone died, you know, as it will. Actually, I think it ran out of room. It does that. It's an old phone, you know. I, I make do. I make do with what I got. So um, I was talking to you about fandom, how I how I got into that, and like that having a group of people um, in you know in my I don't know like my orbit that I was in orbit of um who really didn't look at art as uh, like an all or nothing kind of a thing you know like arting is enough like just doing art is enough um you don't have to be great at it and you don't even have to want to be great at it like it is in and of itself kind of a a, a, a useful pursuit you know you don't have to be great it was a totally new thing for me, honestly. I, I, I've never heard that before. You know, I grew up with, my dad was an artist. I've talked about this before. And like, um, he, you know, like he has a very, like, f had a very fine arts, you know, sort of f feeling about the whole thing. And it was very much, um, you know, like art is a very specific thing. It's, um, you know, it, I don't know it was sort of you know and he was very good and and uh you know he was he was very encouraging but also like I don't he never meant to be discouraging but I think just I got a sense of art as being a very um like a very difficult thing you know to to be good at and so that was very difficult for me um just to kind of um like work with right so I never really felt like I was doing it very well now bear with me because this is a little challenging so basically this is going to be shorter and rounder and then his nose is in the wrong place it's fine everything's fine it's all fine um so fandom really gave me a, a chance to see art in a different way as more of like a fun endeavor and less of like a massive work effort uh, that you just had to like, I don't know, either grind at or that you were just naturally sort of inclined toward. Um, so it was, you know, it was a challenge for me and fandom really, um, there were challenges there, you know, and, and you do things with scenes, you know, before I was really focused on, on portraits, making portraits that were um, very accurate or, you know, as accurate as I could manage based on what, um, 
you know, what I had, what I, what I was able to do. We're just gonna move that over a little bit. We well, yeah, have some issues in here. It's fine. It's all fine. Um, so yeah, um, fandom really gave me an opportunity to, to sort of test some new realms, you know? Um, so I got to sort of think about how, um, you know, like uh, more about scenes and a lot of encouragement, just a lot of really, um, good people, a huge variety in like what, what styles people were into and what, um, like what they, what they wanted with their art, you know, what their goals were. It was just a really good experience for me and it continues to be, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really loving that, um, that group of people and just that, um, that sort of thought process. So, um, yeah, so I've been involved in fandom. I continue to be involved in fandom and it's a really, really good place for people, um, to feel encouraged and, um, you know, like any level of, um, of skill is more than welcome. You know, people are just excited that people are creating. It's a very encouraging environment for the most part. You know, you gotta, you gotta get the right people. But if you find like in, in that sort of space that you're not getting encouragement and kindness, like you just, you know, move on to a slightly different space because they're definitely out there. Like people have been just really encouraging and kind to me. Um, so fandom's been a really good experience for me and I think it's really moved me along a lot. Uh, YouTube is another place that I've gone for a lot of art, um, like information. Um, I've just gotten a lot from um, uh, YouTube. There have been a really a bunch of really good ones. Uh, Proco is a great one. Aaron Blaze. I don't even know if you're supposed to, I don't even know YouTube. I don't get it. Anywho, um, there have been a bunch of different artists that I look at. Uh, Graham Stevenson uh, does Color in Your Life, which is just a hoot to watch. Um, he's just really encouraging. Um, there's there's just a ton of places and a ton of people out there who will be encouraging to you. And I say, you know, whatever you're doing for your art, whatever you're, you know, into, like there are other people into it that want to do it, that want to see you succeed at it so you know just do that do what you want to do um with the art that you're excited about you know um I think at this point I'm in pretty good shape um no I like um I don't know you probably shouldn't paint at this point I'm totally gonna paint at this point because you know why not he's pretty close actually um, he's got a little bit of a more of point here. Oh gosh, Ooh, it's fine. Everything's fine. Maybe this needs to come down a little bit more. You know, you kind of, you do what you can. Um, okay, so I'm going to move with this and I'm going to, um, all right. So interesting. I'm gonna move his ear down because I think I, I don't know, either miscalculated or I thought I was putting in an ear and I wasn't. Like now I thought, ah, who knows? Who knows anything? Um, but yeah, I think we're in pretty good shape. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna go get some paints, put them together and we can talk about that. So, uh, hold that thought. There we are. All right, so I get very excitable about paints and supplies and stuff. So um, my bare minimum, the first thing that I ever had for a watercolor was a Koi K-O-I watercolor set. And uh, it included a water brush and a bunch of like, um, and a bunch of just blocks, you know, the squares of color. And it was a very nice set. I highly recommend it. It was pretty cheap. I think it was like 15 bucks, something like that. Um, so US and uh, yeah, anyway, it was a nice set. Um, I have since like, I'm attempting to branch out. So I've, I've got, um, 
I've got Daniel Smith for the most part. Daniel Smith and some win. I don't know. Who are they? Is it all Daniel Smith at this point? I don't even know. Oh yeah, Windsor and Newton. I've got some of those. They're, they're, those are good paints, you know. Um, from what I understand, it's worth it to get the, the artist quality if you can. Um, who knows, honestly. Um, that's what I hear. That's what I did. I'm able to do that. I figure if you can't, you just do what you can because, like, of course. Because of course. So I'm going to pull a couple colors. So, um... This character whose name I will not speak, but also like um, you probably know him if you've uh, been on your Amazon Prime lately or if you're in fandom at all because it's taken over. It's taken over. Um, I've also never done a drawing or painting of him, so there is no guarantee that there will be any kind of recognizable anything here. But he has red hair, so I want some red, obviously. Um, and watercolor, as you probably know, it comes out very light, and uh, the ideal is to um, like do layers and layers and layers. I have not gotten the hang of it. I'm still trying. Like, it's it's a challenge. It's a challenge for me. Um, so what I'm using here is alizarin crimson. I'm using lunar black. I think moon glow maybe. Hang on. Ah, this is moon glow. I really like it. It's not actually a black. It's like a very dark purple, but it it reads as black, and it's just got a really nice I don't know flavor to it. I want to say, which is not at all what I mean, but you know, you know. Okay. So I've got some laser and crimson. I'm gonna go with some. Well, your basic red series one, red. God, maybe I am. It's been a while, like I said. And when I say a while, it's been about a year. So um, when I started in fandom, which was exactly a year ago, um, like a month, a month ago, a year ago, um, when I started in fandom, I was doing watercolor pretty much exclusively. That's what I'd done for the past, you know, two years. And that was, um, so that was what I was comfortable with. Not too long after that, a couple months in, um, I went ahead and I uh, bit the bullet and I got myself an iPad Pro and Procreate, um, which I will, I will demo like for you at some point. We'll have a, I don't know, some sort of a, a something along with that. I'm just going to throw some yellow in here in case I need to lighten things up. Um... You just never know. And I have a yellow ochre over on the other side of the palette, which is a really nice um, sort of background color. And some browns too. I like the burnt umber. Um, those are nice. So um, I'm going to get started with this because why not? Um, yeah, so I also have like 5 million brushes. You really don't need that many. This is the water brush that I was talking about. I also have some extras. Um, I haven't used them lately. I'm actually thinking about using them with ink, which you can do. Um, I've invested in a couple new brushes because I've just started using acrylics. And acrylics and watercolors just need very different brushes. So acrylics really need um, very stiff brushes. Ooh, I didn't rinse that one properly. Um, and then watercolors need softer brushes. At least that's been my experience. Um, I really like this little guy. And if I need something delicate, I'll use this little guy. And uh, these are like, are these the cheapy ones? Oh, I think I, I got a new set, but like literally I bought a set of Crayola uh, brushes that were slanted. I don't know what they're called, I'm sorry. Um, but they were amazing. They were absolutely my favorite brushes starting out. They've got a really, um, yeah, like Crayolas. Now these are not Crayolas. I'm, I'm trying to like uh, recreate that set because I think my cat stole them and threw them under a couch somewhere and I never found them again because that's cats for you. Um, but yeah, so a joy, always a joy. Oh God, I just get so derailed, I'm sorry. So I'm going to put my paints on my computer, which I would recommend that you never do. Just never do that on my brand new computer. Brilliant. Well, it's new to me. Um, yeah, so uh, I don't remember what I was talking about. Basically, like, you're great. You can do things. It's going to be marvelous. Um, do your thing, babies. Um, yes. So I'm going to start painting, and we're just going to see what happens now. Oh, it's very... 
it's very dark. When you paint in watercolors, or at least when I paint in watercolors, uh, I get into real trouble. See, he's got like a real hook, and then this sort of comes out more. Ooh. Problem being, I don't want to move his mouth, which, by the way, is not a good choice. Like, you know, if you're going to do it, just do it. Do it right, you know. Um, move the things that you need to move because once you get into the watercolor you're not gonna have that option but um, you know I'm chatting with you guys I'm not really feeling it so I am just going to see what I can do with a little bit of creative wonkiness here maybe we can move this over a little bit I don't know I don't know it's gonna be fine here we are I say that a lot. <laughs> Sometimes it even is. It's pretty marvelous. Um, so I'm marking this spot that's like got a really dark shadow on it, on the tip of the nose. I find a lot um, in sketches that you'll see um, this sort of like, you know, people put like a, a just a circle at the end of the nose, because that's typically sh in shadow. You know, if you're getting top light down, um, you get like the shadow on the bottom of the nose because it's, it's angled down slightly, so. Um, I've sort of taken that on here. Ooh. All right, and then the long nostril, and then this. So we're just gonna move this a little bit. Oh man, this is gonna be wonky. You know what? So yeah, I mean, sometimes you win and sometimes you don't, and there we are. That's just that. So anyway, I don't even know what I was saying. Um, watercolors, they're great, they're fun, I learned them, I started with them, and then I moved on mostly to digital. But I'm getting back into the traditional things again because it, digital has been really useful for me to like sort of correct um, proportions and things like that. Like I, I tend to make heads too big and I tend to make hands too small. So it really is easy when I'm, you know, when I'm mucking with those, oh, this is way too dark. I'm gonna just end up with lines all over. So I'm just gonna take this back a little bit, maybe. I won't take it back too much because, of course, I want to be able to see it. But um, I just don't want this to be the only thing I see when I look at this watercolor. Oh, bloop, bloop, bloop. I'm being paged. It's the most wonderful thing. Oh god, and I'm just getting, I mean, this is fine, it's, uh, you know, you're getting a, there's an artistic feel to it because I'm getting pencil ripping everywhere. It's gonna be great. Alright, so, um, yeah, there's only so much you can do before you just dive in, so that's what I'm gonna do. So, um, oh, I've seen a lot of people work wet. I say people, I don't know, YouTube videos. People work really wet. Oh, hold on, because I have to grab a rag. A rag or a paper towel is pretty important when you're doing this sort of thing. Well, let me tell you. I mean, I often wipe on my pants, but like, you know, if you got good pants, you probably don't want to wipe watercolors over all over them. Um, I'm imagining that they will make a mark at some point. My brush is not absorbing my water, so I'm just gonna like massage it a little bit, convince it that this is a thing that it wants to do, and then I'm gonna just brush over his face. So just his whole face, um, from what I understand, and this is all from YouTube, so, you know, as much as you trust YouTube, which is me, but also uh, YouTube, which is other people, um, you know, uh, this is what I do. This is what I'm doing at the moment. You know, I change pretty much constantly because I haven't really figured out the best, best way for me to work, but, you know, I'm trying. So, basically, what I do is I let it absorb. Boop, boop, boop. Sorry, I'm getting my head in your way. My unshaven head, I have to fix that. Um, so, I'm just wetting it down. And what I'm looking for is wet, but not shiny like not pooling so like this area here i don't know what you can see but like this area here is good this area here is not because it's got too much water 
So basically you want like a good spread of water around where it's damp but not sopping wet. Now this this paper isn't grand for this. It's like a multimedia watercolor paper. I really like the arches, but since I'm just kind of mucking around here, I'm really precious with my materials and you really shouldn't be. I would highly recommend that you're not, but especially like, you know, if you're, if you don't have a lot of money and you're like waiting to use that arches paper, like just, just get like a multimedia thing from CVS, you know, if you're in the US, in my area of the US, like it's really, it's pretty straightforward. It's, um, it's not that expensive. It's worth doing, right? Because, you know, then you, then you don't feel like you have to make a masterpiece on every paper because you're not gonna, which is fine. Um, but it's, it's very hard to, um, you know, it's very hard to convince yourself that uh, you can just muck around if you have very expensive paper, especially if you don't have a lot of money to spare. Um, so to mix the skin color, what I find is skin color, you know, like, you, I don't feel like you have to get really crazy with it. I'm going to have to wet them again. Um, you know, it's like some yellows, some reds, maybe some orange, maybe some brown, and like, if it doesn't match the skin color that you're looking at, it's probably fine. Because as long as it's a skin color, A, it's gonna go on very light. Um, you know, as, yeah, I gotta re-wet. Um, it's gonna go on very light, you know, like once you have water on here, your um, most of your color is gonna be quite light. Um, you know, because it's, you're dispersing it in quite a bit of water and you're dispersing it over a fairly large um, area. And you can pick up paint when it's wet, you know, which is nice. Um, so I'm just gonna like start filling in, and this is so not how you're supposed to do it. I'm gonna start filling in some of the dark areas and let it sort of bleed into the lighter areas. So, um, this here is a shadow, that's a shadow. We've got one over here and it's gonna bleed just everywhere but it doesn't matter because like all of this is going to get very light and I'm gonna have to go over it again like multiple times so I can usually anything that happens now I can fix later to some extent or another right so the other thing is if you keep it wet I'm just gonna rinse out my brush so I can kind of spread it around and I don't have a lot of paint on my brush oh, I should have gotten his uh, I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow I think Ooh, probably not the bright yellow, maybe the yellow ochre. It's gonna be great. Okay. Um, and actually, a little bit of pink probably would have been a good call. But as long as it's wet, I got time, you know? Um, and if I, you know, see how dark that is, I don't want that even remotely that dark. So what do I do? I add water. Um, well, I don't know if that's the way you're supposed to do it, but that's the way I do it, and it's semi-effective-ish. Um, the other thing you can do is like if you have a rag or something you can just blot a little bit and pull it up and then that really helps. Boop, boop, there. See? Nice and light. Alright, so um, I do want to get a little bit of color around here. I mean you really don't want any white showing up in a face. Like, they just aren't white, you know? Um, if you wanna, um, I usually will add highlights in later. Um, I'll either leave them or I'll add them in later with um, kind of grainy. Some of the paints are, are grainy. I don't know why, they just kind of, they just are. Oh, now my dog's very angry that she's in the bedroom and I'm here, which is funny because she's been in there for a while snoozing away, happy as a little clam, but now she's mad, so. I have to take a moment and go grab her. So, I love how I'm like teaching you how to paint. I don't know how to paint. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just mucking around, man. Um, but, you know, I mean, I have, I've looked at things. I've, I've watched stuff. So, hang on. I'm just trying to get a little bit of a darker shadow color here and here. It needs some blue. He looks a little bit blue in this picture, so I'm gonna add some of that. Like I said, like as long as it's wet, you got time. 
um, once it's dry, you're, you still have some options. Watercolor is kind of forgiving. Um, so like with watercolor, you can, no, no, no. Um, got some eyebrow here, here. Um, with watercolor, you can kind of pull some of the color up. Um, so if I wanted to pull color up, I can wet it and then blot it and it'll kind of pull that color out and I won't have to, um, just want to. And we return yet again. Um, my phone really doesn't accept much in the way of, uh, time. So we will just do this in tiny little bites. So I'm bringing up my picture again here. My dog and I are medicated. I am not medicated. I should medicate. I will do that. If you need medication, don't forget to do that. That is very important. And it is a big part of taking care of yourself. As is art. Art is also a great way to take care of yourself. So don't take it so seriously that it makes you crazy. Um, lips are not really that red. Um, just as a heads up. I usually just do a lot of brown with a touch of red in there or orange. Um, I'm looking at the, the reference, his top lip is pretty dark and his bottom lip really isn't. Wow, that is completely not the shape. Okay, there we go. Alright, so, okay, bear with me. See, this is why one needs a sketch and one should uh, follow the sketch. So it comes up in a kind of... Perspective is such a cool, weird thing and challenging as heck. Like how I did that? See that? I am, I am YouTube's appropriate, everyone. All right, so, so that's pretty nice. I'm actually gonna basically rinse out my 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 dog is freaking out again. Just cannot win with her. She's a loop de loop. Um, so a little bit down here of, um, just a much lighter color. Um, I'm not touching the top lip, I'm hoping not to, because it will bleed like crazy. So I'm just gonna hold, and I'm gonna hope that all that works. Don't ask me what's happening there, because we don't know, but that's what later's for. Um, so I've got like a pretty decent line, like layout of his features as they are. I mean, y you saw I had some challenges with the nose, um, so that may not quite line up. Actually, you may not have because that may have gotten cut out when my, uh, when my phone went. Um, but trust me, I had some issues with the nose, so... Um, that'll happen. Sometimes you go back and you correct that. It really depends what it's for. Um, I don't know if you've heard the pot theory. I, I swear by it. But basically, um, making 100 pots is going to make you better at pot making than making one pot that you make absolutely the best that you possibly can. Um, it's just, you know, the more you do... The more you learn, the better you become. And that is a fact. I know, because there's a pot theory associated with it. <laughs> um, but it's certainly been my experience as well. So right now I'm just trying to get these shadows in, you know. Sort of here, grab some water so that they don't have huge lines associated with them. Um... another thing with watercolor that I struggle with which is like this um, you know making sure that the colors don't just end abruptly um, you know this line should be fairly sharp but not that sharp so what do I do I don't know um, I'm gonna try and soften it up but if I hit it too early it's gonna lose all of its shading effect so you know, I guess sometimes this is the point of layering, I guess, um, which I, which I'm really poor at. You know, you uh, you layer the color in, and then you can kind of build it up over time. So I'm gonna leave him with a bruised-looking neck for now. Um, 
and we will pop up maybe into the hair the harrow area um, I think this all dried while I was off and about so I'm just gonna wet this down and then probably we'll have to take a break um, because I'm going to run out of time again on my telephone it's really a pain but it's you know it's fine I you know this is kind of like a video for one <laughs> like I'm just amusing myself and I'm hoping like eventually somebody will go back and be like you know because I'll make a video of something that that's actually pretty good and somebody will go back and say like wow look at this person look at what they were doing like two years ago um, they they've really come a long way like that's my goal honestly is like I just want people to see progress um, and I want people to understand that like they can make progress certainly hope that I will have progressed more and honestly like I'm not unhappy with where I am right now I feel very good about where I am so like don't think I'm like um, saying like I'm I'm no good because actually I think you know my likenesses are pretty decent um, you know there's plenty that I can't do but also plenty that I can yeah. kind of forgot about that edge of the glasses it's fine um, but uh, yeah I mean I am very I'm very pleased honestly with like where I am Woo -hoo -hoo. wow that got whoopsie it's fine it's fine um, uh, you know I'm, I'm very happy with like how so there is some that comes sort of over the jacket. That'll be very dark in there, so it won't matter really. Just, just a little, we'll just muck around in there. It's fine, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. All right, let's see here. I sing that at work, they love it. It usually means everything's going down the tubes. Um, all right, so. Here we are. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, I am very happy with where I am. So don't think that I'm, like, I'm, you know, saying terrible things about myself and then making people feel bad about that. Like, I, I've i been doing this for about three years, I would say. And, um, you know, I think I've come a long way, and I think my likenesses are pretty solid. I think my understanding of features and faces has come a huge way. It's pretty much where I've focused, is the portrait. Um, and I've been very happy with that. You know, I have, I, I, I'm inconsistent with my art, so like sometimes it just comes out really, really well, and sometimes it just doesn't. And I think that's what you improve at too. Like, s more often you become you know, good at, at a likeness. Um, and I don't think any artist ever like manages to do it all the time. I think, you know, like every single artist is going to have good things and bad things, you know, like at least if you're, if you're continuing to try and do new things, you know, maybe like you find the thing that you're good at and then you just keep doing that and that's fine too. Um, but like maybe you won't find that you're inconsistent if you do that. Uh, for me, like I, I can't decide on anything, any one thing that I want to do. You know, I, I do watercolor and I do acrylic. I do digital. I muck around with people and animals and landscapes and, uh, you know, who knows? Oh, my goodness. All right. I'm going to take a moment. Um, I'm going to start this back up again in a little bit and then we'll see where this goes. But thanks for hanging out.